As Mark Cuban once said, creating opportunities means looking where others are not. And that's exactly what the entrepreneurs behind the three products we are about to discuss did. They saw a gap in the market and created innovative solutions that are not only practical, but also profitable. From a piece of convenient workout equipment to a mess-free solution for parents, these products caught the attention of the sharks and left them impressed with the numbers. So get ready to hear about the products that prove that with a good idea and a little bit of determination, anyone can make it big in the world of business. If you're a parent, you know firsthand how food can turn into a messy disaster when it comes to your little ones. But fear not, Julianne and Glenn have come up with a genius solution. Subo is the world's first non-squeeze food bottle. Food sits on top of a platform, and as you sip on the soft silicon spout, the platform automatically moves up the bottle. Subo is great for pureed fruit and vegetables, smoothies and yogurt, and even tin spaghetti and wheat bix. But you might be wondering, how do you eat spaghetti from a bottle? Well, Janine had the same question and nasted it like a boss. I don't quite understand, how do you get spaghetti yeah. out of the, the top? So it's quite a, a large opening, it's 12 mil, mm. so you can get chunky right. foods through. Steve's uh, using it. Yeah, no, it's yeah. good. Glenn then demonstrated how the bottle comes apart, making it easy to wash and reassemble. When the food finishes, the platform comes to the top. You can easily disassemble it. So the platform comes out, and then essentially you've just got a tube. It's designed so the platform pushes the food out. The sharks were impressed, to say the least. This is an incredible design. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Absolutely Thanks, incredible. This is great. It is really good. Glenn shared the story behind their creation, and the sharks had more questions about the target market. What's your key market for this? Kids can use it from six months because they use the, the sucking reflex, which is mm. the first reflex. And then they... it goes up to what? Any it's age. So we have adults using it as well for protein shakes, smoothies. And after the introduction, they got to talk about the numbers. Okay, so it costs us seven dollars to make this product. Our recommended retail is twenty nine ninety five. Oh. So in the first twelve months, we sold twenty five hundred of these bottles. How much is that in dollars? So revenue was fifty five thousand. Now, Steve wanted to know how much they've spent on the product, and he was shocked with the numbers he heard. How much have you spent to date on this product? It's 580,000. Lord, you've spent 580,000 dollars. Yes getting to this point. Steve also wanted to know what they wanted from the sharks, you know, besides money. 120,000 bucks, what do you want from a shark? Uh, your expertise. Our biggest challenge is product awareness. Not a lot of people know about this bottle and we want to get the product out there on shelves so that people can see it and sell it. The first offer came from Steve. He was simply amazed by the product and he was all up for investing in it. Uh, this, this to me is a godsend. I think this is just amazing. It's so well built. You name your price. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, 120, I'm in. I'm on your journey. Done. <laughs> what the hell? Glenn liked it, but he didn't make an offer because he saw how Steve was into it and didn't want to compete. Andrew was out for the same reason, and Janine as well. She didn't have an offer better than Steve's. I think he's made a great offer. I think you've made a fantastic product. I wanted to make a deal with you. It's nowhere near as good as Steve's offer. I'm out. Thank you. Naomi was the last one left, but will she make an offer? I feel like just having some fun. But I don't think that's fair in business. Business is serious and you've put a lot of money into this, energy and effort. I have never seen him that animated. You have got a great offer. So for this deal, I'm out. And now the last one standing was Steve. So we all know how this is going to end. Yeah, definitely take Steve off. <laughs> With all the sharks biting, Julianne and Glenn knew they had made the easiest deal in Shark Tank history. And it's safe to say that their product is going to be a game changer for parents everywhere. If you're a fitness enthusiast, you've probably encountered moments when the gym seems too far away or when workout equipment takes up too much space. And luckily, Max Pro is here to solve those problems. This amazing little 10 pound machine gives you five pounds to 300 pounds of resistance. No heavy bulky equipment, no gimmicky gadgets, wow. no flimsy bands. Robert was blown away by the product and had to give it a try. What is that, no, 50? That's, that's 12 and that's, at, that's level 12, which is about 45 pounds right there. Oh, oh wow. my God. I gotta tell you, that's incredible that you do it all from that. Yes. Meanwhile, Kevin was all about the business numbers because who doesn't love a good financial breakdown? What did you do last year in sales? Four million in sales. Whoa! Whoa. What? What have you done so far this year? Over eight million. Wow. 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 
The sharks were impressed with the figures, and Lori wanted to know just how versatile the product was. Max Pro is literally the most versatile thing you've ever seen. You can use it like he's doing right there. We, it's in your kit right there. But you okay, have so to mount those on clips. your desk. Yes, you have to, and it's a strap. It's a single strap that goes around, and they're specially engineered. And Kevin jumped back to talk about numbers, and once again, he liked what he heard. The retail value is eight forty-nine. And what does it cost you to make it? Two hundred five landing cost, twenty dollars total between pick and pack and shipping. And you sell direct to consumer only? Yeah, 97% um, of our sales well, that's pretty is, well is everything. D2C. All the sharks then jumped in for the money talk. This year, we're probably gonna reach over 12 million in sales. And what will you make on that? Um, we'll probably be close to breaking it, but, but maybe right around- now you're burning money is what you're saying. Yeah. Look, there's nothing wrong with no, it, No, no, right? I'm okay with that. I know that. we get all caught up in profits, but if you're gonna scale a business, right, you gotta invest to grow. Nazar then said something that caught the sharks' attention. We also signed on with um, a very big endorsement personality, uh, Shaq. What was your deal with Shaq? You gave him equity. He earns it over four years. But what does yeah. he earn? How much? A 1.25% this year, and it can go up to 5%. And Damon was the first one with an offer. I would give you the 500K, but I would put a royalty on it, $25 a unit, till I get back my 500K, and then I would convert to 4% ownership. That's not, not bad. Lori had a question for Nazar. What exactly did he need from the sharks? Yes, what sure. do you need from a shark? The sharks know how to open doors. They can help us to get more investments. And we're going into retail, also hotels and military. Nazar, you ever offer anybody half a million dollars that they didn't even acknowledge it or give you any kind of answer? <laughs> you know and even though Damon was expecting an immediate answer, the rest of the sharks still had some questions. What is your return rate? Great question. And I'm happy to say that it's less than 5%. I had an even better question. But this is important because less than 5%. Yeah, it's very low. That's really good. good. Yeah, that's in really in good. The, so you're but, you're, but you're overselling at this point, right? No, so he's not because some of us still have questions. Now, Kevin was the next shark that said where he was standing with the business in question. And, you know, since he had some doubts about it, he was out. Mark was the second shark to make an offer. I'll give you the 500K for 3% plus I want the exact same deal that you gave Shaq in advisory shares. Then that way Shaq and I can work together, do stuff. He's a great friend. So that's what it is. And Robert, well, he was out after he heard Mark's offer and Lori opted out for the same reason. It was time for Nazar to decide whose offer he would take. But before he managed to do that, Damon bailed out. Damon. I, I definitely appreciate the offer, but I just have one question for sure. Mark. Well, you gotta make sure that question is a good question because I'm out. So, the only offer was Mark's, but will they manage to make a deal? The only offer you have is Mark's. Right, so no, we're no, having a conversation. I, I, not, I'm not yeah. arguing, I'm just so saying, yeah, like absolutely, Mark, dude, I'm like all in, baby. Of course. <laughs> yeah, this is good. yeah, yeah, thank you so much. All right, thank appreciate you, man. It. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Jake and Eric came to the Shark Tank with a very interesting product. I mean, the product by itself is not an innovation, but it's something very useful. And their pitch was, well, crazy interesting. We've created the future of wireless charging. <laughs> Introducing Era, the world's first free position wireless charger. We already have charging pads, right? Well, this product is not the same as the ones you're thinking of. This is not a charging pad. This is a charging surface. That means you can place multiple devices in any orientation and they'll all receive power. One phone down, charging. Another phone down, charging. Put a phone in the middle, also charging. The guys passed the product sample to the sharks and then further explained how their business would work. Product. Is this what the finished product would look like? We're actually a licensing business, right? So the electronics module that you hold in your hand is what we actually will sell to our licensees. So anybody can then buy this technology from you and they're going to brand it however they want to. Exactly. Robert then asked the question all of us had in mind. What is the difference between the existing Apple charging pad and this product? Tell me the difference between this and my Apple charger. Wireless charging right now all works exactly the same. There's a little coil in there actually that looks just like this. There's a little hotspot in the center of that thing. And if you're not lined up, you can't receive power. And these guys knew what they were doing and talking about. Eric was a huge expert actually. Eric is one of the foremost experts in the world on Tesla coils. 
and wow. the same underlying really? technology. He actually holds a Guinness Book of World Record for most powerful, one of the largest, most powerful testicles ever built. Really? He's been an expert in this thing yeah. for over a decade. Now that's amazing. Well, props to Eric. Mark then told him about the competitors that were already on the market and gave his reasons why he won't be making a deal with them. U-Beam's company I happen to be an investor in that doesn't take the same approach. It's fully wireless from any point in the room to be able to distribute using sound-based technology. There's a strong chance you guys get leapfrogged, so for those reasons, I'm out. Robert was interested if they had a final product, licensing and all that stuff, and the guys had a good answer to that too. We already have our first licensing partner. They're one of the largest companies in the space. They put in their first order last week for 33,000 pieces. What is that retail equivalent? Well, it's up to our licensees what it retails for, but we could say that we get between 4 and $10 per unit. Damon wasn't feeling the product and he was out, but Robert made them an offer. All right, I'll give you the 500000 for 10%. Oh, man. Oh, tell me now. Lori also had an offer for them together with Kevin. Kevin and I are going to give you an offer together. So our offer is 500000 9% interest is a loan. We want 15% equity. We're going to split it 7.5% each. But we'll guide you to the extent you need it on licensing. We do a lot of licensing. So Robert was standing by his offer, but Lori and Kevin changed theirs. As we're no longer a line of credit. We're going to be the 500000 We're going to put the money in as an investment, but we're still at the 15%. Get two sharks, two huge sharks. You guys want 15%? Yeah because we're we really good. So the guys had two offers in their table. And what do you think? What did they choose to do? Can we get the three of you guys for 15%? We'll, we'll, do that. We'll, we'll do that deal right now. <laughs> and the tables have turned. Will all three sharks agree to the counter offer these guys gave them? 515 if we get the three of you. Done. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and now that's a great deal. Good job. And there you have it. The entrepreneurs in this episode have demonstrated that they're willing to put in the work to achieve their dreams. They've faced tough questions from the sharks, but they've remained focused and committed to their vision. In the end, they've all secured deals with the sharks, proving that their perseverance paid off. So it is an inspiring reminder that with hard work and dedication, anything is possible. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.